Alright, let's we can get started. Um, my name is Fred Moulton. Uh, I'm with the Libertarian Future Society, and we're here today uh, for our Libertarian Future Society Awards uh, event. Um, we're going to be having uh, two awards uh, today. The uh, first one is the Hall of Fame Award, and the second one is the Prometheus Best Model uh, Award. And then uh, following uh, those, we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, so, and then uh, this, just a reminder, you know, now's a good time to take you if you have any question you want to ask. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, have a, an opportunity for some photos. Uh, to begin with, um, the Hall of Fame Award uh, is an award that's uh, been given uh, you know, for many years uh, by the uh, Libertarian Future Society and focuses on older classic fiction, including novels, novellas, short stories. And past Hall of Fame uh, Award winners range from Robert Heinlein, Ayn Rand, Ray Bradbury, Ursula Le Guin. Uh, the winner of uh, this year's Hall of Fame award is Animal Farm by George Orwell. Uh, the other uh, finalists for the award were Machine Stops uh, by E.M. Forster, uh, uh, as he is ABC by uh, Roger Kipling, uh, Repent Harlequin, uh, Set the TikTok Man by Harlan Nelson, and Falling Free by uh, Lois and Pastor Gold. Uh, <clears throat> I must say, uh, First, I will show everyone what the award for the Hall of Fame looks like, and um, say a few, few, few words about Animal Farm. Animal Farm uh, has been described as a dystopian allegorical novella, and few would disagree with that description. However, for our purposes today, uh, let us consider some particular aspects of the work. This 1946 novella by George Orwell is a work that is well within the scope of SF, that is science fiction, fantasy, and related fields. Consider that the first UK edition had the subtitle, A Fairy Story, although this subtitle was dropped in later editions. And whether Animal Farm is shelved and or listed in SF or general fiction is most certainly SF. As a work of libertarian SF, Animal Farm excels in an unvarious. It's explicitly anti-totalitarian, it has powerful imagery, and it has stayed in the public mind for many decades. The anti-totalitarian nature of Animal Farm is well known, but we are so far removed uh, in time from the 1930s and 1940s that it's worth reminding ourselves that Animal Farm is also implicitly critical of the regime of Joseph Stalin in the USSR. Consider the Stalinist era practice of persons being removed from photographs and contrast that with the changes over time that occurred with the Seven Commandments when we painted on the big barn at the farm. Uh, Orwell was masterful in showing how changes over time can be made until the Seven uh, Commandments had, gradually, had <coughs> excuse me, gradually been reduced to one. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. In the novella, the changes were made without notice by the pigs and other animals either did not perceive that there had been changes or did not challenge, uh, create a challenge. This lesson in pain, maintaining transparency and openness in legal systems and not letting the historical record be whitewashed is well worth remembering. Many phrases from Animal Farm have entered into common usage in, in the 65 years since publication. The powerful imagery of the book is accessible to readers at many levels and thus is an excellent choice for uh, young adult readers. This is why many readers first encounter the work as students. Animal Farm is often included in lists of the best English language novels of the 20th century. And in 1996 at LA Con 3, a retrospective Hugo for Best Novella was awarded to Animal Farm. The Libertarian Future Study Hall of Fame Award plaque will be shipped to the Orwell Society in the UK at the, uh, at the conclusion of, uh, of the event here. That uh, award is uh, 
one of the, the awards at which we look you know, into historical works. And now we turn our attention to a work that just was published in 2010, the Prometheus Best Novel Award. That award uh, is, has uh, the finalists were uh, For the Win by Cory Doctorow, The Last Trumpet Project by uh, Kevin McDardry, Live Free or Die by John Ringo, uh, Circe's by L. Nell Smith, and the, the winner of the award is uh, Dark Ship Thieves by Sarah Hoyt. Um, 
my son, when I told him I needed to speak about the novel, he said I should say two things, and I'm going to say them, because he couldn't be here. He's driving his younger brother to school, so. My son said to tell you that the future is free, but the past is extremely expensive. That his technology can free it and can allow for more individual scope. But if we insist on trying to narrow technology and doing things the way that it's always been done and clutching onto the past, it's going to cost us a lot, not just in money, but in lives and in opportunities. Um, we see this right now. A lot of professions, including mine, are changing very rapidly with technology, and people are trying to legislate this back into the past or to use tricks to bring us back into the way things were done. That's never going to work. And it's just going to cost opportunities, it's going to cost money, it's going to cost lives. In the same way, my son said to say that it's possible that in fact the future is a boot stomping on a human face forever. However, when a boot is stomping on your face, you're in an ideal position to kick the person in the nuts. <laughs> Yes, and that's what we go into. 
that is an energy board. And it's, I, I worked very hard to bury it in the first book. But uh, what happened was sort of a tragedy of the commons. The, the, the ships who were collect the energy were available to everyone. Uh, but instead of getting exploited to death in the classical, it was some people abrogated to themselves the right to organize it. And, and everyone else sort of went, well, you know, someone has to do that until it, it got ready. I, I wanted to read those books from the short version of them, and I want to know what the first one is. The first one is Starship Thieves. Starship. The second one yeah. hasn't come out yet. The second one is Starship Thieves is the first one, and then... Starship Renegades, but it, it hasn't come out, probably won't come out until next summer. Although the E version should be available in spring. Next question. If you don't ask questions, I'll start speaking. <laughs> and if I start right. speaking, I will stop. <laughs> yes, we have a question in the back. I want to know what else Sarah has planned. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have planned. <laughs> Uh, actually, I, I just started, as I said, I delivered the book yesterday. This book took very long. It was due in January. Uh, it took very long because it had twins. Um, my publisher at Bayon says, we're Bayon, we don't come too good. Because uh, I called her and said, this book is two books. And it's not even the same main character in both books. And she said, oh, that's OK. We're playing. We don't come too good. One book, two books, three books. And um, the next book is a different set of characters. We're calling it A Few Good Men. Don't throw things. I know it's the name of the movie. I suspect that's why the publisher likes it. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the series, it's a pun. Because good men are the rulers of Earth. They call themselves the good men. So, uh, and it's the beginning of the revolution on Earth. Because Earth is in a totalitarian regime. Because it's Earth, and because this is not Star Trek, um, it's not going to be a revolution that takes place in a book and frees the entire Earth. And there are several revolutions that pull us into one. There are different visions for them, and it ranges from the American Revolution, which is the beginning of the book, the beginning of, of the revolutions, definitely, and my characters are inspired by the American Revolution. Actually, directly inspired, uh, historically. But the it, it ranges from the American Revolution to the French Revolution in some places, and, and shows shows it going seriously wrong. Because again, they try, they try to legislate all the good stuff, you know. So we're all going to love each other, right? We can make a law about that. And of course, they can. They can, but it doesn't work. And um, and that's a few good minutes the beginning of that. And I expect, I expect that's going to run to three or four books. And then there's because uh, Eden is the colony world, and because there was a power grab boards fall apart and they they need to go elsewhere and colonize desperately because they live in a very small space. And if that's that evolution of their society and then all those pressures is other things. So, but you know, I thought I thought it was obligatory because I grew up reading Naima. And I grew up in Portugal, which means I was at the remove. Uh, Writers, writers happened in the United States, not in Portugal, which is why it never occurred to me I could be one. And uh, I wanted to, but it seemed a little silly. I, I first set my sights on being an angel, as you can tell that word. And um, I, I grew up reading Heinlein, and he talked about his future history. I thought the future history was mandatory. <laughs> I thought you had to have one. So before I wrote science fiction, which is what I wrote first, uh, I got sort of pushed in fantasy. But science fiction is what I wrote first. And as I got 
to writing, to writing science fiction, particularly short stories. I built this entire timeline over a thousand years. I have a thousand <coughs> years of future history. So now that I'm finally allowed to do science fiction, I suspect there will be a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yeah. You didn't really ask what is your next book to write? Not just since you finished this, or are you going straight to the I'm next I'm more paper? than halfway through a few good men and I'm now I'm now fixing it. Because I got halfway through it before I realized I still need to write the one with the thing as long as well. <laughs> so I went back and wrote it. Uh, and that's, I, I hope to deliver that one by the end of the month, and then, uh, and then I have other things I need to do that are, that are in science fiction or fantasy. I have a mystery I need to finish. So, so, so what all genres do you have My tagline is, I'm Sarah A. Hoy. No genre is safe for me. <laughs> I set out to write science fiction. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, if you know, if magic happened, I and for those who are curious, English is my third language. French was the second. I learned French at eleven and English at fourteen. And uh, when I yes, I read Heinlein in translation. By the way, there are some writers that are so much better in translation. <laughs> um, but I, I read Heinlein growing up. I read. I actually started in secret and moved to Heinlein. And I thought, yes, that's what I want to do. I want to write science fiction. And then I grew up and, and got married and came over here. And the when I finally started breaking in, people kept telling me, oh, ladies write fantasy still puzzles me. I, I tried to tell them I wasn't a lady. No one had ever accused <laughs> of that. But they didn't believe me. So they made me write fantasy for a while. And um, I, I thought, well, I have learned to write fantasy because I didn't grow up in fantasy. I think the first, the first book that I read that could approach fantasy, and she would kill me for saying this, but I thought it was fantasy when I read it, it was Dragon Riders of Perth. <laughs> so, and, and it seemed weird to me when I first read it. I grew, grew used to it, but it seemed odd. So I had to learn to write fantasy, and once that barrier was broken, you know, my husband kept, keeps telling me every time I say, I will never write this, he starts laughing. Because I told him, I can never write mystery. And I just knew I had the idea for a mystery and broke it. And I, you know, I've written romance, but in my defense, I didn't know it was romance while I wrote it. So, um, so, yeah, I, I write. The ideas come. I'm not really particularly careful about tagging, but but science fiction. Science fiction is what I want to do. Thanks for. Huh? Oh. I've written, I have a uh, shapeshifter fantasy with Bayon. Um, Draw in the Dark, it's now available only in e book through Bayon. And so, uh, came as a, one of those web descriptions things. Yeah. I've never heard of you before, and that was my first experience. Well, that's a good thing. And uh, there is a third book that I have to write in that, that's also grossly overdue, but Tony said, do the science fiction first, which is why I love her. Um, and uh, I do historical, I did a historical fantasy trilogy with Phantom. I have Under Sarah Dal Under Sarah Dalmeida. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Under Sarah Dalmeida, I did a series of mysteries with the Three Musketeers. And then under Elise Hyatt, I do contemporary furniture of finishing mysteries. Don't ask, please don't even ask, but you know, it's what the publisher wanted. And, um, oh yeah, my, I broke in with the Shakespearean fantasy. It's an alternate history of Shakespeare's life. It involves the elves. 
<laughs> and that, that's going to come out. It's been out of print for a while, but it's going to reissue it as a um, web scriptions e-package. In fact, the first book of that one was I was wondering, since you seem to have an interesting brain and interesting makeup, are there any areas of nonfiction you might interest you to write? Yes, I, I really love to write. Um, because I read a lot of it. I love to write uh, not quite fictionalized the popularized history. I just haven't had time because it, it takes a lot. I figure, you know, one of the kids is 20, the other one's 18. In a couple of years, I should, should just be the two of us and the cats. Okay. She also writes four books. Um, according to Floyd, which is her first book, she writes I blog a classical balladist, which is a libertarian blog. I also uh, blog at Mad Genius Blog, which is a, uh, a, writer's. a writer's blog. We we mostly there. We blog about you know writing in the field and changes in the field, and I do occasional articles for the Jones Media. Next question. Any other questions? If you have no more questions for Mr. Floyd, could you tell us something about the Orwell Society? Uh, well, the, the, or, or, the Orwell Society um, is uh, has just recently been formed, um, and is going is going to be working on uh, a uh, literary event uh, about Orwell coming up later. The uh, Orwell does. You, you may, may or may not know, or has a uh, surviving son who's affiliated with with this Orwell Society. Uh, the uh, society has its in the UK, and there's going to be an event, and I forget the exact date, but it is coming up. If you go to their uh, site uh, online, they, they actually have the, the uh, information on the literary uh, event that's going to be in the UK. Um, if, if my brain uh, was functioning perfectly. I didn't actually think the city in the UK, but it, it is not London, it is one of the uh, other other cities in the UK. But they're a very, very new organization, they're just getting formed. Uh, and uh, they're going to you know, provide a, a place for uh, you know, scholarly uh, and, uh, and other types of investigations and analysis of the work elsewhere. Yes? Uh, actually, this is sort of a better question. Orwell, but it may involve other uh, sorts of things. We, uh, many of us are, uh, we, we, we extend freedom of possession, freedom of uh, possession of ideas, and as a result, if we can't find, maybe not with Orwell, but you can't find uh, authors who are effectively imprisoned by their heirs. And, uh, one of the things I kind of worry about is that some of the heirs of some of the authors who are not necessarily science fiction people will not understand what they're doing with uh, their parents or ancestors were. Yeah. And if, if we write into it, any of that, we are all of just happy to get happy to yeah. be noticed. Yeah. And would we run into any of that 50 uh, or 100 years from now with uh, <laughs> the, ranch, uh, the grandchildren? Oh, no, 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 no. You see, my kids have been probably done. <laughs> and uh, they will probably they'll get their kids in the cradle. You've got, you got two boys, right? Yes. And they're going to, uh, they might marry uh, uh, two women that are, uh, that are as beautiful as their mother, except for their dads. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, there is nothing we can do except maybe uh, uh, the copyright. Copyright is too long. Now, it was intended as a way of people being able to make a living, not a way for their grandchildren not to have to work. So, yeah, there, there is a problem. Uh, yeah. um, the, uh, just to yeah, elaborate a bit more on your medical question, it was, first off, with the more well, we don't have problems. His, his son is, although his son is not a, doesn't want to be very much of a public figure, yeah, his son is very uh, uh, supportive of. Uh, Things like the global society and such as that. Um, the, the uh, to follow on what uh, Sarah just said, 
the interesting problem, and I have seen this not with works that were related to uh, Indian LFS awards, but there is, and I will not use the name just for purposes of privacy, one author who wrote uh, just general science fiction, uh, and his family did not think well of that. And when he died somewhat at a younger age than would be expected without a will in place, the family basically had not has not allowed those works to be republished, which means you can only buy them now in used editions, uh, and the price is starting to go up. And that would continue to the point where the, the, they fall back into what's you know, generally considered outer copyright or the public domain, and then, they, then they'll be available. But that is, uh, and you can have an entire panel on that whole topic, uh, which is beyond the scope of this one. Uh, I was thinking that maybe the LFS did and something on the order of, uh, well, whatever the copyright law says, this is donated to the public. And, and part of the LFS thing is maybe two points is donated to the public. And, <laughs> uh, in 40 or something like that. Uh, I, I, so that the LFS legacy lives on while all the rest of the stuff is like that. Any other questions? We have, uh, we do have to uh, vacate the room uh, in about uh, 10 minutes because the uh, Online Society is coming in here next. So, uh, two, two couple of quick questions, and we'll have a little bit of photo opportunity. I just wanted to say, I know she's got an autograph, autograph session at 2 o'clock. I know. Just wanted to No, I'm aware of it. Uh, yes. Coming, yeah. Looking nice at you. I'm going to have to be like this, yes, because they will be better. So. That's one thing. This is comment by any authors who are going to be present. Make sure you get in your will a literary trust. Trustees who are able to carry your copyright. Yes, very good point. Okay, uh, if there's nothing further, then we'll bring this uh, formal meeting of uh, the Printer uh, Fruit Society to a close. Thank you all for attending, and we'll have a few minutes for photographs. Thank you.